there's this baby, and, 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 and your wife is, is, you know, she's not feeling it <laughs> to get up and move. And God says, Joseph, get up, move. Herod is trying to kill this child. It's this little child, Jesus, by this time. He's not a baby anymore. He's a little kid. And he gets up and he moves his wife to another country. To, a, to among foreigners. Now, how many of you ladies know that when you ask your husband to get up in the middle of the night to do something, they're so excited to do that for you? <laughs> Nobody raised your hand. Okay. <laughs> Think about this. God interrupted Joseph's plans and said, for the sake of your family, I need you to get up and move right now. And he did. Now, guys, let me just ask you a question. Are you willing to put your wife's needs ahead of your own so that you would be willing to get up and do what your wife asked you to do and gave you a reasonable request to do something and it was on her heart? Are you willing to get up and do that? Joseph was willing to get up and move his entire family to another country for the sake of his family. Guys, you were called not only to be the, the, the one who earns the money, but you're supposed to be the protector as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Your wife's needs come before yours. You're not only the, the provider, but you're the protector. You're the lover. You're the one who cares for her more than anybody else in the world should ever care for her. And she should feel that day in and day out. Now, does that mean you're perfect? Absolutely not, because they're not perfect. But you should become more like Christ and how he treated us. Now, notice this next verse on your outline. Philippians 2, 3 tells us, do nothing out of selfish ambition. How many of you guys are ever selfish in what you do? If I do this for my wife, I might get some of this later. Right? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I can't believe you said that, Pastor. In humility, consider others better than yourselves. Consider others better than yourselves. Why should your wife treat you good when you treat her bad? It's a hard thing to do. You know what it's like. When you don't feel like she's loving you or meeting your needs, it's a hard thing to surrender your rights. And yet God says, I want you to be willing to do that, to consider others ahead of your own. Now notice this next point. Number four, what else does a godly man look like? Well, a godly man will realize the importance of obedience. A godly man will realize the importance of obedience. To who? To God. Amen. To God. I'm not talking about you're a slave for your wife. I'm talking about you are a slave to God. Yeah. To do what God wants you to do. To honor Him with how you treat her and respect her or, or dignify her. Or you don't and know that God is, you're going to have to answer to Him one day. Now notice this. Look at Joseph's obedience level. And I want you to think about your obedience level when you hear verses like this this morning. Notice this. In Matthew chapter 2, after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Here's that angel again. And he says, get up and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. Now notice this. So, now notice this. Write this down. Circle it on your outline. So he got up and he took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. Somebody said uh, to me between the services, somebody said, it's not a miracle that he got up. It was a miracle that she went with him. <laughs> Now notice this. He got up, he took the mother, and they went to Israel. But when they had heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. Now notice this. And he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets. He will be called a Nazarene. This angel comes to Joseph and says, Herod's dead. 
You can go back home. You can go back to Israel. I want you to go back there. And he gets up and he takes his family back. And when he gets there, he finds out that the son of Herod, who is worse than him, is still is writing there. And they might try and kill Jesus. And so this angel says, go this way to this town in Galilee. Go to Nazareth and raise this child and you'll be safe there. Now think about this, guys. If God tells you to do something, guys, look up here for a second, man. If God tells you to do something, are you going to do it? Yes. Are you going to do it? You've got to ask yourself that. This is where we get real with each other this morning. Because a lot of guys will say, yeah, I'm going to do it and walk out the doors and don't do nothing about it. And a lot of guys that come to church will come in day in and day out and they'll put on a good show for everybody. But the, in reality, they, they're not treating their wife as they should. Obedience. Jesus doesn't want you to be happy. He wants you to be obedient. Obedience comes before happiness. When you're doing what God wants you to do, he's going to bless you. He's going to bless your marriage. He's going to bless your family. He's going to bless your kids. He's going to bless your career. He's going to bless everything that you desire to do with your life. And God is in line with that. He is going to go ahead of you and pour out his blessings upon you. But he won't do it if you're not obedient. And you can guarantee that. Joseph was an obedient man. When God said to do something, he did it. Now, did he have questions about it? I'm sure he did. But he was willing to go and do that. Now, notice this verse. This is an, an interesting verse. One that just slaps us across the face when we read it. In 1 John 2, 4, it says this. The man who says, I know him, will know who? You know Jesus. If you're here today and you say you're a Christian. If you're here today and you say you're a follower of Christ. If you're here today to say you're a child of God, then you're saying you know him. Now notice the rest of the verse. The man or woman who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a what? Liar. Liar. And the truth is not in him. The truth is not in you. There's a word that Jesus used a lot, and the word is this, hypocrite. You put on a mask in front of everybody else. But when you're alone, you don't listen to me. And you're not obedient. The man who says, I know him and doesn't do what he says is a liar. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a liar. And I got to be honest with you. There are times when I am not a godly man. And there are times when I don't treat my wife with respect. And there are times when I, I say and do ugly things. But guys, you know what? God is a forgiving God. And if you ask him, he'll forgive you for that. And he'll give you a new chance. And he'll say, I want you to become the godly man I've created you to be. If you're willing, obedience comes before happiness. Remember that. Notice this one. Last thing. What else does a godly man look like? Well, a godly man actually lives what he says he believes. They will actually live what they say they believe. You know, Jesus never asked us to do more than he was willing to do for us. Isn't that true? Jesus says, I want you to be a servant. And he was willing to bow down and wash his disciples' feet. Jesus says that we should sacrifice our lives for our, our wives. And he was willing to die on a cross for us. He, was, he said to forgive others and he was willing to forgive us. Jesus never did or calls us to do something that he didn't show us first. And I think that he had a lot, that Joseph had a lot to do with that. And Joseph wasn't a perfect dad, but he was a righteous man who tried to live for the Lord. And I just want to ask you guys, are you willing to try that? Notice what he did in the area of faith for his family. In Luke chapter 2, we found Joseph living out his faith. It says, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus. 
and the name the angel had given to him before he was conceived. And when the time of their purification, according to the law, Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now, in the Old Testament, there was a lot of things you had to do in order to be righteous before God. You had to offer sacrifices for your sins. You had to offer sacrifices because you were unpure. You were not pure as God wanted you to be. You had to, you had to be willing to, to go to this temple where God was. You had to go there to see him and visit him. Well, the New Testament comes along and Jesus comes along and he is the ultimate sacrifice. Now get this, guys. Look up here. Everybody looking up here. Jesus says, when I died on the cross for you, I've wiped away all of your sins. You don't have to make a sacrifice anymore. There's nothing you can do to deserve that. He did it because he loved you. And he's made you clean. And he's made you holy. And he's made you perfect. 